Hello, everyone. This is Joseph Schoolin with Populi. If you are here for the intro to admissions reporting group training, then you're in the right place. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, well, a couple, uh, couple notes. If you got any questions, put them into the Q&A box. I will answer them all at the end. Um, and it's just a real easy way for me to process those. The chat uh, questions can sometimes get lost. So um, uh, if you have a question, put it in the Q&A. And it's okay if you put it in the Q&A uh, sometime, you know, whenever you want. As soon as you have the question, write it down, shoot it in. Uh, but I probably won't get to the question until the very end unless it happens to uh, come across my radar and it, and it seems to make sense to answer it then. I'll go ahead and share my screen. You should be able to see my screen. You should be able to hear my voice. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear my voice uh, and everything is good to go. Let's go ahead and log into Populi. And I'm using a login that can see everything in Populi. If you're just in admissions, then you'll probably only be able to see this little admissions tab. Uh, and that's okay. Um, so you'll, you can kind of see what's possible, even if it might not show up on your particular uh, Populi. Real quick, before we begin, we're going to be covering a lot of stuff. So I always like to let people know where they can get help if they're stuck on something. And that is right up here in the top right corner. We've got a help button. If you're the type who likes to research on your own, go ahead and click search the knowledge base. If you want to reach out to one of our support staff, and we love hearing from you guys, so please reach out to us as soon as you have a question. Don't wait, don't beat your head against the wall for three hours and then finally ask us. We'd, we'd love to hear you sooner than later. Uh, just click open a support request and you can reach out to us. If you wanna view those requests, you can do that here. We'll also send them to your email so you can see them there. Um, if you want to make a feature request, you can do that here. If you want to visit our user forum, you can do that here. Um, we also do phone support. In fact, we do phone and email support for all staff and faculty and then email only support for students. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to give us a call on the phone support side, it's 877, the number four in the word populi, 8774 populi. And hopefully, hopefully you can just memorize that right now. Uh, if not, if you couldn't memorize that, that's totally okay. Just go to either to our main website, our public website, or you can go into our help uh, center and our knowledge base and you can look under these promoted articles. This is where you'll see upcoming um, trainings. This is where you'll see uh, how to contact us, our numbers inside there, uh, this article. If you're totally brand new to Populi, even if your school's been using it for a while, but you yourself are new to Populi, definitely go in here, getting started. It's got all of our tutorials organized in order so that you set up, uh, can set up Populi from start to finish. And today we're gonna be looking at admissions. And so you can dig into the admissions section if you need to. You can also go to our YouTube channel and uh, view any of these recordings there and even some interviews we've had with clients or some other stuff we put on there too. Um, some interviews with developers too, if you wanna check some of that out. And you can do, uh, you can reach out to your account manager, which would be either me or Nick Holloway. Uh, my name's Joseph Schoolin, or you could be with Nick Holloway, depends on who your account manager is. And we could schedule a webinar where it's just you and us, us and you. And we can focus on Instead of kind of hitting these things generally, we can focus on your specific school, your specific situation in a way that, so the difference between that and support, support can do all that too. They can focus on your situation in a specific way. The difference between the account manager is that we're actually scheduling a time with a webinar. So there's a visual component, whereas with support, it's going to be phone and email and they can walk through on their end on the phone and see what you see. Uh, and they can also send you screenshots. So there's some things where you guys can see what each other sees. Uh, but if you like the webinar thing and want to just go through it, set aside an hour or 30 minutes, reach out to your account manager. Those are all the different ways to find help. Let's jump in to admissions reporting. The very first thing uh, you should note is we got a little dashboard here. Uh, this is handy and just seeing what's going on. It's, it's more, uh, I woke up in the morning, I'm looking at the news, looking at the admission news, admissions news for the day. I'm seeing dates and times and representatives and what they might've done 
Joseph School and add a communication plan to a new inquiry named here. Um, I can filter down and say, yeah, you know what, all I care about is new applications coming in or people who've started application and what those statuses are. Um, I can also drill in on one of my representatives and see uh, it's that activity for a particular representative. Uh, I can see my neighboring representative too. All representatives can see uh, what everyone else is doing. Um, so I could jump over to Randy Registrar and see what he's doing and he's not doing anything. Um, so this is a real quick, it's not so much for getting down to the deep, you know, deep into the data. It's more, um, you know, getting my morning newspaper and seeing what's going on. Let's take a look at leads. Leads are your people in admissions. They're all the people who you're tracking and a lead is going to be walked through seven different statuses. This first status is going to be prospect. If I add a lead right here, they'll automatically get the status of prospect. If they come into through my website as an inquiry, they'll automatically be uh, get the uh, status inquiry. Or if they already were a prospect in my system, they'll be switched to inquiry. Uh, once they start an application, they'll get this. Once they complete it, they'll get this. Once they uh, once you accept their application, they'll get this one. Uh, if you want, you can go in and confirm them after they say they're going to uh, they're going to show up. That's more of a manual thing. And then finally, you can have them automatically be switched to enrolled uh, once they uh, uh, are enrolled in a course in academics. Just so you know, this is one you have to turn on the enrolled status. And you do that over here in settings, other settings. Um, right here, automatically mark my leads enrolled when they enroll in any term. That's what most people do. Some people like to be more strict and say only if they enroll in the term they said they were going to enroll in, then it will automatically switch it over to enrolled. Uh, make leads inactive when they enroll in any term or some folks, again, prefer that target term to be an important thing. I think most people are probably doing any term, but you can choose if you wanna be a little more strict. What this does is it essentially makes marks their status as enrolled and their, uh, their status as a lead as an active so that they're not gonna show up first on your list. By default, active equals yes is what shows up here. All of these are active, they got the check marks. Once they become inactive, then I have to search for them by going into active is no. And then I can look up all my inactive leads. So I can still look them up, but they're not gonna uh, come up front and center for me when I go sort through uh, my leads. So that's a real handy thing. If you've got 3,000 leads or 10,000 leads all the way back to five years ago, you probably don't have those settings set up right and no one is ever getting marked inactive. And so everyone's just getting thrown into this giant haystack and you're digging through trying to find those needles. Um, so make sure those settings get right. If it is really crazy, like 10,000 leads, like some big number, um, and you have some criteria you can give us like, well, everybody who has ever taken a course from us, um, make them inactive on the admission side. Or if you have some kind of criteria you can give to our support, as long as it's big, then you can, uh, I mean, if it's only three people who need to be switched, then just do that by hand. But if it's a hundred or 200 or 10,000, then definitely ask us to help you. All right, so why am I here? I am here because I want you to understand what leads are and how they relate to the rest of admissions and how to report on them. And the first thing we're going to look at is the filter. Now, it doesn't matter what part of Populi you use, whether it's academics or financial or admissions, the filter is probably one of the most important things to learn and understand. Uh, and you got to kind of get your analytical brain working to make it work. Um, but right now we've got match all of these conditions. In fact, actually, let's just go ahead and reset the filter. So now I have no restrictions and I've got 309 results. Some of them are active, some of them are inactive, doesn't matter. Some of them might have an enrolled status, doesn't matter. I've got them all uh, showing here. And so now this is what it does by default is it's gonna show me my people who I'm representative for. So we can go ahead and add that. Everyone who Joseph Schoolins are representative for hit apply. Now we're down to 19. Now let's say I wanna filter down by every, all my leads who are active, active equals yes. Again, this is gonna be a default, but we're just working this out. Okay, now we're down to 13 results. And then I want to say anyone's status who is 
Um, application started. Now we're down to four. I could even go to say anyone who's interested in being a part of our uh, undergrad program. Now we're down to two. Once, notice how I'm being real strict on this. I'm saying match all. So all means I'm essentially putting little ands in between all this. It has to be representative is Joseph school and, and active equals yes and status is the application started and the program is undergrad. Let's say I did this instead though. I said representative is Joseph school and, and active equals yes and I add a new conditions box. And here I don't want to be so strict as to say everybody needs to be application started. Maybe I want uh, status to be they're either started or completed. And instead of matching all, which puts ands, I'm going to do an any, which essentially puts or. So notice now I've got both application start statuses uh, and the application completed statuses. So here, these two have to be met because it matches all. It will only show me people who I'm representative for and they are active. But this one could be either or because it's an any. So here, show me anyone out of this list who either has the application started status or the application completed status. So you can build out two of these bubbles and do some alls and some innies uh, to kind of drill in on what you need. Again, you're gonna to need to get your analytical brain working to make this work or have someone on your staff help you or reach out to our support team and say, I'm trying to get this data, uh, can you help me? And uh, those will all be ways, all legitimate ways to uh, get the data you need. Once I've built my filter, then I'll have two buttons up here. One is save. Here I can now save, test filter. If I just want it to be visible to me, that's fine. If you check this box, then anyone else who has the admissions role can also use this filter too. Uh, most of the schools I talk to, usually they allow all staff users to see it because they're just kind of on, on a team and doing everything together. So I'll go ahead and check that uh, so that we'll share. And once I hit save, now I've got this filter saved. Because I'm looking at this particular filter, then it shows me, oh, I'm looking at test filter. That's what I named it. And if I need to edit it, I can update it by deleting it, giving it a new name. If I add a new criteria, let's say, um, there we go. Source is referral, any type of referral, that's fine then it will notify me that I've got some unsaved changes. So what do I want to do now? Well, I can save an update test filter, or I can save it as a new filter. So Poppy is going to walk with you if, you're, if you've got a filter up and you're then adding some new criteria. I can also use load. And this is if I'm showing up for the first time and I just want to see everybody who is confirmed. And so this is active equals yes, status is confirmed. Uh, everyone who's representative is Joseph. And that's also got an active in there too. So I can load my old filters just by hitting load. Finally, what do I do with this data once I've used the filter? Um, well, for reporting purposes, you can just export this to a spreadsheet, either XLS or CSV. And on my way out, I can add whatever other data components or data columns I want. And maybe all primary contact info. Once I hit go, it'll export all these columns and then the selected columns that I chose. And give me a nice spreadsheet that I can hand over to someone else or mess around with on my own outside of Populi, uh, things like that. You also notice there's some other actions. Uh, in admissions, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, in Actually, every filter has a lot of actions typically. The ones that are consistent across all of Populi are email, email these folks, text them, and export. And then depending on where you're at, um, you'll get some other options. Like here we've got assign a representative, apply a communication plan to all these folks, remove a communication plan from all these folks, add a lock, tag, untag, 
set a custom field in batch, remove a custom field in batch. Some of these will show up in other places too, but the ones that are uh, consistent across the whole system are email, text, and export. So that's how you do this ad hoc reporting. And, and I give a head nod to some ad hoc communication too, but we're talking about reporting right now. Um, this is just built everywhere. We do have some specific reports that I'm gonna go into, but if you're not familiar with being able to pull a report from any table you're looking at, uh, you should get familiar with that because that will really expand your world. Inquiries are the same way. So these are all the inquiry forms that have come in. There's gonna be one line per form, even if somebody uh, filled out two forms and I can filter these down. Maybe I just want to filter it down by uh, all the in inquirers who are waiting on us. So they're waiting for us to reply. I hit apply filter and now I'm down to this and then I can work through these folks. Everything's the same. Filter, save, maybe, maybe you already loaded one, but save or load and then email, text or export. And then same with applications. Maybe here I want to filter down everyone who's 90% or completed or better, but they're still in progress and their applicant activity is no activity for the last six days. Those are all filters that we have inside here and you can filter that down and then email or text that group and say, looks like you're almost done. I mean, theoretically, they just, they got to the very end, they're 90% and then they just quit for six days. What's going on? Uh, they didn't submit their application. Why is that? And so I can, email that group and say, looks like you're almost done. What can I do to help? Another use of that or export it, give it to somebody else who needs that report. All right, that's how you use filters. Let me show you some of our preset reports. We've got a funnel report in leads. The way this works is you choose a date range. And typically folks will just choose their, um, their uh, admissions uh, cycle, whatever their cycle is. By default, it's going to go back one year. Um, you could save one that's uh, for your, uh, for whatever your current admission cycle is and have it only go back to that date. I can add some other components, uh, what program they're hoping to do, what degree, what source they came through and see how that changes my funnel. I could even export each one individually and show a different funnel for each source type to see which of my sources are most successful. And this is how you read these numbers. So we have these built-in seven statuses and we're just gonna show how it moves through. So I'm gonna start here. We've got four who entered uh, as a prospect during this date range. And then one of those four continued on and three did not continue on. And that's just during whatever date range I've got here. So I might back this up and choose a different date range and these numbers might change a little bit. But I'm just looking to see within that date range, which of those four moved on and how many didn't. We say lost, but that doesn't mean that they're permanently lost. It just means they have not moved forward within the date range. They might move forward tomorrow because that's outside of this date range. And, uh, and that's good. So they're not lost like forever lost. It just means they didn't move forward. Then if we look at the next line, we can see how many entered here. We have zero who entered as inquiries, but we do have a total of one. So why would we have one if zero entered? Well, that's because of the one who continued from the previous status. So we had uh, four total here. Um, one of them continued on. There we've got it, uh, an inquirer. And out of that one, one of those continued on. So that's good. And so we've got a new total 50. Well, what does that make made up of? That's the one who continued from inquiry and then the 50 who entered. Now, in a more realistic situation, you're gonna see more of a top heavy funnel probably, and it will move down and get uh, smaller and smaller. smaller. Why, the reason I've got this wonky one is because it's goofy demo data and I do experiments with this and I show people stuff and usually what people want to see is an application and so I start an application from an applicant's point of view. I do that way more than starting an inquiry from an inquirer's point of view or just starting or just entering a prospect. So I've got this big number right here because that's just how I happen to use it. You probably won't see it that way. You'll probably see a larger number in prospects, a little bit smaller than that in inquiry, a little bit smaller here, all the way down until you have a more uh, concise number in enrolled. 
Now, out of these 51, the 50 who entered and the one who continued from inquiry, we only have seven who moved on. None of them entered in here, and so we've only got seven, none of them, and then seven of those moved on. We've got seven here that are total for accepted because none entered, it's just the ones who moved on. One of those moved on, so now we've got one confirmed. One of those moved on, and with the seven entered, again, don't know why that would be the case, because probably because of wonka data, wonky data, data stuff I'm doing, uh, but we've got a total of eight, one from the previous one and seven here. Now, if you're looking at this and it looks wonky on your side too, maybe because you've had some turnover and different admissions folks were using this in different ways, uh, and so you're not sure what's going on with this data, you can click this button here, show the underlying data used to generate this report. And you'll be able to see all seven statuses across the top and then a date for each one with each um, lead who's counted up here. And if you want to mess around with that in a spreadsheet, you can export those numbers. That's what we call our funnel report. Uh, inquiries don't have any special reporting except for the filter. Uh, applications do have a couple special reporting tools. The main one is fields. And this is where I can uh, focus on the fields within applications. Right now, my default is applications whose status are in progress or submitted. So these are not accepted folks, it's just people who I'm working on. And I wanna see, uh, maybe I just say, I wanna see all in progress fields. And out of my in progress fields, I want to see um, the field, uh, let's see, uh, birth date on our application. And I want to see that everyone who has not answered that field, so that answered equals no. Apply filter. Uh, I've got an any up here. See, that'll get you. Well, I want to do all to have it be all of these. Good. So now I can see the birth date field for every single person. See the application name the current status, and I can see, because I said answered is no, I can see the answer is blank. If I wanted to see answered equals yes, which I don't know if I have any of those in this system, let's see, I've got one with a birth date uh, in here, so I could see a list of all those answers. And that same thing, I can save and load, and so on, I can export this data. What's the point of this? Well, the reason you would use this is because um, let's say you have noticed that you've got one um, field that always holds things up. And so you like to come in here and check how many people uh, aren't answering that particular field or how many people have answered that field. Because if they've answered that field, they're probably well on their way. Um, so those, that might be one example where you'd use this. We also have questions. So these are on the application. The applicant can click ask a question and that will send a question to the admissions team. That's where this shows up. And we can filter these by waiting on them, waiting on us or solved and some other ways. All right, we're coming in for a landing here. We also have an activity feed on individual student accounts. So I can go to an individual student and I say, I called Simon and we talked about whatever, and it will record the date and time and who left that note. I can also adjust this visibility. Right now, my default visibility is staff. Any email sent from the system will also go here. Any text message sent from the system will go here. If I generate a letter in communications, it will go here. If I upload a file by clicking this uh, right here or dragging and dropping, it will go in the feed. If I check off a to-do, uh, it will go in the activity feed. And so I can kind of keep track of, um, this isn't very strict reporting. This again is more kind of like I get up in the morning and I'm looking at the newspaper and just seeing what's going on. I can jump in on the student and see a running history of who's talked to them, who's left notes, who's checked off to-dos, who sent emails to them, and so on. Or I could drill on a particular person. I could even go as far as to say, show me all the changes for this person. So what's, that, what's the change that happened? Who made the change? What was the date and time? And what was the change uh, that took place?
I can also apply communication plans for to-dos, add to-dos right here. And then after I've added to-dos, I can do a little bit of reporting on those right here on my homepage under to-dos. I can see all to-dos assigned to me that are active, or I can see all to-dos assigned to me that I've completed. Or if I'm the person who's always assigning communication plans to other people and assigning to-dos to other people, uh, I can instead flip this and say all to-dos assigned by me either completed or still active. Looks like all the ones I assigned got done, so that's good. They're all completed. Good, that is admissions reporting with a couple other things sprinkled in. Um, now it's time for you to ask some questions. Mary Neal asks, how would you Set a filter to report how long it takes for prospects and inquire inquiries uh, to become enrolled. Um, good question. So here we want a time, a length of time. Hmm. So I don't know, so this would be a good question to fire to support. If I can't figure it out, always ask support, get a second opinion um, off the top of my head. So just trying to, to fly with this is I could, um, if I think I would have to do this in a spreadsheet is really the only way I would do it. So I could choose my date range, show underlying data, and then I can see dates uh, of students when they became a prospect and when they became enrolled. And so I'd pretty much, I think, have to export this and do the analysis that way. Um, I can't think of a way inside Populi where I would pull up uh, the actual dates of each status and when they happened. That's the best I can come up with in this shorter notice. Sorry about that, Mary. Uh, ask support, maybe I got a better one, but that's my best answer is show underlying data or export the underlying data to a spreadsheet and you can dig around with it there. You might wanna choose this date range a little longer uh, if it typically, if it takes students longer than a year uh, to, to enroll. Um, and that's the only thing I got. Della says, for what reasons would target term be selected for enrollment status? For what reasons would target term be selected for enrollment status? I'm not sure what that question's getting at, Della. Um, enrollment status. Are you talking about uh, lead status? So for lead status, uh, these terms are their target term, and they have nothing to do with the statuses. Um, so they're not combined. It's just if you gave the applicant the option to choose what their entrance term, what they wanted for their entrance term, um, then they could put that in or you could manually put that in if you talk to them. And that's where this has come from is this is a term that Donald uh, wants to start classes. This is all old data, of course, because this is a demo college. Uh, so in your school, it's going to look into the future, most likely. And you might want to talk to that applicant to say, hey, you said you were coming by this date and that term is, we're halfway into that term now. So do you want to readjust that? Where are we at? But the enrollment status the or lead status is what it's called, uh, has no connection with the uh, entrance term. It's just the student needs to get through all seven lead statuses before they can actually enroll, the seventh one being enrolled. And so they need to get that done to be able to make that deadline of that uh, entrance term. Deborah says, how would you link enrollment documents to the application? Is there a way prospects can sign and send documents through their Populi, uh, excuse me, account? Um, on the application, you can create statuses, uh, sorry, fields. You can create fields that allow students to upload documents directly onto the application. Um, we don't really have a strict, uh, like a built-in signing thing, but we have had folks where maybe they'd add a field below this that uh, they upload a file 
or if you give them a PDF, I suppose they could just sign it, physically upload it, you know, scan it, upload it. Um, if you want them to, you could also do a bunch of text uh, written out and then below that have a checkbox that say, it says by checking this box, I agree that I have read the text above. Um, so you could kind of build in these check boxes to have your own little check boxes that they have to check to indicate they've signed. Um, but that's something you would build using your filters. Um, how would you link enrollment documents to the application? Uh, the best way to do that would be to go into the application and then whatever field you want to attach it to, uh, you would click on that field and then you can upload um, the file there. So for example, let's say this field said, um, submit your official transcript, um, check the box after you've submitted it. They go on there and they check the box to say they've submitted it and now it's just a waiting game. We know the student believes they've submitted it and we're waiting to receive it from the school. Once we receive it from the school, we can then open up that field and then upload the transcript here so that's underneath that, uh, ex that spot. And you don't need to click this so that they see the note, it's just your own note that you're keeping for yourself. That's the only way to upload a file to the application is you have to upload it to the individual fields. Um, oh, sorry, that's not the only way. There is a place right here called Notes and Files and I can add a note or upload a file uh, right here so it stays within the application. So there's, there's a spot over here where I can just add whatever I want, uh, type out notes or add files, and that's really flexible. And then the final spot is if I don't want to add it to the application itself, but I want to add it to the uh, student's admissions tab, then I can build a custom field uh, that maybe has a, a file that I can upload. Like I built one, uh, this one called transcript, and I can upload a file to it and hit save, and it will rest here instead of on the application. So hopefully that helps. You can upload files to individual fields. You can go over here to notes and files to upload them to the application in general, or you can upload them to the profile under admissions by, you, by building a custom field that takes uh, a file. Della versus just enrollment status being assigned for any term versus their entrance term. Oh, I see what you're saying. I gotcha. What's the difference between these settings over here? Um, so what this means is um, if they enroll in their target term, that means that's their entrance term. So their entrance term is the term that they said they were going to show up, or it's the term that you put in uh, saying they were going to show up. You can do it yourself or you can have them do it depending on how you set up your application. Um, so for example, let's say we're going to, we'll use traditional terms. I know there are a lot of folks who don't use traditional terms these days. Um, but let's use a traditional term. They say they're coming this fall. That's their target term because they said they were going to come this fall. That's their entrance term. That's their target term. And now let's say they enroll in summer. Well then Populi will not, uh, switch their enrollment, uh, status or their inactive leads if these were target term because they registered for a term that was different than their target term. It was earlier, that's awesome, but it was different than their target term. Or let's say they waited till after fall and didn't go until spring. Uh, again, it won't automatically switch because it was different than the term that they said they were going to show. Some schools are, are uh, strict about that and they wanna make sure they're tracking that they showed up when they said they were going to. Um, this one is any term, then that means in that example, even if they, their target term is fall and they said they were coming in the fall, if they came in summer, then we'd switch it then because it doesn't matter, it's any term. If they came in fall, we'd switch it. If they came in spring, they'd switch it. That's the difference between those two fields. Any other questions? Good, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to our support team, click that help button, either give them a call or shoot them an email. Uh, if you want more in-depth help, of course, you can go through uh, to our knowledge base, go to our YouTube channel, 
or reach out to your account manager and schedule a webinar if you prefer to learn like that. Uh, if you don't know who your account manager is, reach out to our support team and they'll be able to connect you. Uh, you're welcome, Mary, and I hope this was helpful, and I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and enjoying, uh, enjoying your lives, at least here in uh, uh, Moscow, Idaho. The weather is starting to get beautiful, and uh, we're able to get out a little bit, just taking walks, uh, and it's been nice. So hopefully it's nice for you too. I hope everything's going well. Take care. Bye.